Hey guys, so today we have some Dwarf Fortress story time write ups for you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you at the end of the video. What is your best Dwarf Fortress story? One thing I never get tired of is hearing other people's story in Dwarf Fortress. Be it funny or intense, from adventure mode to fortress mode, share your best stories. Okay, mine isn't the best out there, but I'll get us started. In one of my first experiences with Masterwork, spoilers if you aren't familiar with Masterwork Plagues, I was in the first steps of a new fort called Workbook. Just dug out all the main rooms, started building shit and digging deeper. And the second migrant wave brings nine dwarves, some nice skills among them. Then suddenly I lose control of the expedition lead as she attacks some migrants. She is killed by war dogs. What the hell? Then the brewer goes crazy as well and kills all of the war dogs with his bare hands. I found out then that this was the rage virus of Masterwork. The brewer, brewer, <laughs> brewer? The brewer encounters a miner, who takes it upon himself to mine the brewer's left hand into the ground and then flee. One-handed brewer kills a talented blacksmith and then engages a new infectee, a boyer, and wins. Two more become infected. There is a massacre and only five uninfected dwarves remain and the murderous brewer. Murderous brewer? <laughs> oh, my accent does not fit that word well. <laughs> they all engage him at once with their hands. He survives several hundred blows to the face and being strangled by four dwarves for several weeks. The brewer reappears in the citizens list with 16 kills in his fort, nine of them dwarves. Four of the wrestlers go on a break while one remains to keep the murderer strangled. I seriously can't control any of them, not even with Burroughs now. When they return, the new commander starts beating the murderer with somebody's pants. Okay. <laughs> a few more weeks pass and a diplomat arrives. He enters the room, sees the scene and abruptly leaves. The containment crew are now legendary fighters and wrestlers with according titles. Then finally, two of them die of thirst. One is insane, who dies of thirst next. Two dwarves remain. The vanguard who stayed back while everyone else took a break. And the oxygen deprived for months mass murderer, now probably insane. Practically every bone in the brewer is broken, so he cannot move. The remaining wrestler can't move either due to a broken ankle. The killing machine who is apparently immune to all physical damage is not immune to thirst. <laughs> he dies of dehydration next. The surviving legendary wrestler remains broken on the floor and accompanied by two cats and two surviving puppies. After a while, 23 migrants arrive and the fort lives on. The wrestler died of thirst before the migrants could help him. Workbook was deleted later due to crashing bugs. Yesterday, a giant honey badger attacked my sheep pen which some idiot had left unlocked. A fleeing ewe gave birth while being chased and the baby lamb promptly gored the honey badger in the head and killed it. Pretty badass. <laughs> Ooh. This was one of my earlier fortresses. I wanted to construct a grand dining hall for all of my non-stuck-up dwarves. Is there such a thing as non-stuck-up dwarves? I don't think so. <laughs> I decided that I was going to carve a giant dome in the mountain and engrave it as I dug it out. It took a long time because I wanted all of the artwork to be done by one dwarf like the Sistine Chapel. When I was finally finished, I was not satisfied. I felt I needed a few lava falls to make it complete. Not knowing how to make a lava fall, I decided to find out for science. Warning, do not try this. I dug out a tunnel back into the volcano below my dining hall, oh god, thinking that since there was no lava pressure, it could all just flow in a circle. I dug out the tunnels above the dining hall, except the one to let the lava in and put in an iron floodgate in case it didn't work. Now ready for my experiment, I assigned the last space to be dug. Then the goblins came. <laughs> I immediately assigned all my dwarves to a burrow to keep them from going outside. Having just completed my dining hall, I figured, what better place? I posted my military at the front door and I waited for the goblins. We fought off the ones that came to the entrance badly, but in the end they left, leaving a couple of my soldiers still alive. At this point I realised that my population had dropped about 60%. I go to my dining hall to check on my dwarves and see that most of it has been flooded with lava. One of my miners had picked up the digging job before I set up the burrow and let all the lava into my dining hall. 80 dwarves perished that day. Oh god! <laughs> 
I had a heroic one-armed dwarf called Abel, I think. He was great, not because he was a boring, invincible hero, but because he survived no matter what. As a recruit, his squad defended against a small force of goblins riding cave crocs, etc. His squad was wiped out, many civilians died, and he got his lower arm ripped off by a cave croc. After staggering away and passing out from the blood loss, he seemed done for. But as the gobos and crocs turned their attention to killing civilians, he recovered and rejoined the fight, using his one good arm and his teeth. The next major fight was after he had become pretty skilled, wielding a battle axe in his only hand. A goblin weapon master, can't remember the type, killed several of his squad and fought him one on one in an epic duel, cutting off the upper part of his stumpy arm by sheer coincidence. Not bothered by the loss of an already useless limb, he struck his opponent down and was off to the hospital yet again. The next battle was a huge siege and he led the charge out of the fortress, slaughtering gobs like a madman. But I think due to his lack of shield, he would often get stunlocked from being knocked down or parrying and he could barely get a hit off against groups of larger goblin war animals. Eventually, he is brought down and a war bat manages to break his wrist. At this point he is in serious trouble, with a group of goblins attacking him and war animals wrestling him. Due to his adamantian armour, commissioned for his heroism, most of the blows glanced off but was no help against wrestling attacks. Every joint in his body was locked, snapped and otherwise mutilated. Most of my military had been decimated and I had no real reserves to send out as a rescue party. And the heroic dwarf is slowly being beaten and twisted into a bloody pulp. But he doesn't die. Red on every remaining body part. He refuses to die because he's too hardcore. The leader of my Marks to War squad is sent out and performs a slow and painful rescue attempt as the remaining goblin force retreats. Eventually he is brought inside and despite his horrific injuries he is treated and back on his feet in almost no time at all being comprised more of stints and silk threads than muscle and bones. Eventually I decide to use a hack to take control of him and go on an adventure. The first night in the wild I'm ambushed by boogeymen. I cut the first one in half, its torso goes sailing through the air and arcs back striking the dwarf in the head, jamming skull through brain and killing him instantly. I couldn't believe that after all that, after the odds he survived, he died such a ridiculous death. Jesus Christ. While playing Adventure Mode, I got a quest to kill a rock. For those of you unfamiliar with him, the description was along the lines of a huge bird of prey, larger and fiercer than a dragon. Sounds fun, right? Being confident in my abilities and hoping for a challenge, I set off alone to fight this mighty beast. For reference, I should tell you, my character is a human necro vampire sword master clad in iron. Iron. With an iron shield and sword. Upon arriving at its outside lair, it spots me and charges. I notice sparsely strewn skeletons nearby and promptly call them to my cause to distract him. The skeletons weren't much more than a nuisance as he dispatched them repeatedly with ease. However, they were bound to rise again and carry out their task. Upon stabbing the creature twice in the chest and only managing to tear muscle, the huge creature took flight. Four levels up into the air he went. Not having wings of my own, I resorted to throwing arrows at it. In a total of 20 arrows thrown and a meagre four hits, I was wondering when its mighty creature would come to face his doom. <laughs> when I saw the announcement, the rock has fallen unconscious. Apparently the silver arrows dug too deep and he could not continue under such pain. Four stories he dropped, unconscious, landing on a wing and fracturing multiple bones. Taking my chance, I leap upon him, and with a quick and precise slash, I open an artery in his throat. The skeletons moved in on their prey, but they had served their usefulness. The fight was over. Standing guard over the dying beast, I dispatched the skeletons one by one as they moved in. Shortly thereafter, the mighty rock bled to death, and was then risen again to fight for his new master. And yes, he can still fly. That's pretty fucking badass, not gonna lie. <laughs> I distinctly remember one of my first embarks with a waterfall. The lower river had cut a gash going from the west to the north, with the upper river coming in from the south. I lost a dwarf early on when designating early preparations 
as he walked too close to the edge of the waterfall and was swept to his death. This foreshadowed the tragedy to come. I realised that the waterfall was dangerous and set about carving a fortress beneath it. What I don't realise was that my dwarves were doomed. The next spring, a group of some 30 migrants arrives. I had lost several dwarves to the waterfall of doom already and had started construction of a bridge crossing it. My masons kept wanting to build from the other side and were swept away and could only watch in horror as the migrants coming from the north made an uncontrollable beeline for my entrance right past the mouth of the waterfall. Dwarf after dwarf were swept over the edge and those that did not die on impact were instead left to drown slowly. Fuck me! I worked even more feverishly. Instead of designating floors to be built, tile by tile, across the carnivorous maw of the waterfall, it was when I was nearly done that I realised that there were flashing white X's over the river. It turns out that there was no crossable point at the lower river, and half of my dwarven migrants were starving to death. I barely managed to save them with the erection of another bridge, having lost my good masons. I can't say I've learned my lesson, as I still seek out waterfall and barks. Just too much fun, I guess. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And don't forget, while you're here, hit the bell notification. And also check the links down below. The West March D&D YouTube channel is up and running. So you can watch the guys play some D&D over there. And go check out my channel as well. Links down below. And models on the eBay. Some sexy ass big titty models on there. And, um... That's about it. Yeah, that's it. So... Right. See you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye!